And when she took it to River Road, they rejected that album. Mm. They said, kwa nini umevunja ile culture umeenda kupigiwa na wao wanapiga music kizungu ama the feel is not right for River Road. Mm. She came back to me and said, "Well, will you advise you in Cambia? That is what I wanted because I don't want you to remain a River Road artist." Mm. Yeah, that but you... there's there's several versions which have been done without our permission. Mm. If you may allow me to just share. Brick. The Belgian Army Air Force has done Jambo Bwana for their match band. Mm. But they asked for permission. There are several other groups. Bonnie M, they stole that song from us. What? When we were in Germany. We were looking trying to get opportunities we met a guy took us to Frank Farian the the owner of Bonnie M uh-huh. all right and we told him look we have one week to go back to Kenya we'd like to do a, a new recording and this is some of our music and we gave them a copy of that he knew how oh, Africa wata rudi tena hapa mm. so akatuchenga chenga We come back home after two months. Our friend in Germany came for a holiday in Kenya, and he comes with Jambo Bwana done by Bonnie M. Guy, 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 guy. So you see, that's another one. Jambo, Jambo Bwana, you are welcome. Kuna matata. Jambo, Jambo Bwana, have a good time. Enjoy the sun. Please Barbara, Barbara Froja <laughs> Barbara Froja uh, France has done Jambo Bwana in Kenya even Mzengala has done Jambo Bwana um, there's a guy in Nigeria Afrobeat has just done Jambo Bwana so the, it's on and on and this song by God's grace is evergreen but they are taking your intellectual property yes without your you said that the, some the, some with permission mm. some and it's difficult to know because unless somebody sends it to us hey from russia for example mm. uh, these guys have done your song we would never know so the way somebody i get it i get it it's so easy to for a song to be infringed nowadays what do you do when a so- when when somebody does that to a song like that we reach out through our lawyer oh, okay we reach out and then you know it's always a very long thing okay yeah man this copyright thing is <laughs> it's 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 ah. is there any way you can copyright us okay, well, when a song is copyrighted it's copyrighted globally yeah it's this is not a t4 it's just for you, the you don't have to uh, you don't, it's register not, it's anything. not locked to kenya yeah yeah it's not yeah, locked to kenya yeah. and more so within within the the reciprocal agreements between cmos yeah you should be getting your your royalties your royalties yeah okay so let me ask now in this time This is by the time we entered in 1990 you've been together from 72 have members started transitioning in and out yes like the drama i told you about uh-huh. the keyboard is i used to be a singer you know i graduated from a back backup uh, vocalist singer to a lead singer so now you and your brother so yeah so teddy was a lead singer i was a lead singer even the others were doing lead singing and then <clears throat> When we started using keyboards in the band we got a guy who left us the same way the drummer did he also got a job in the UAE mm. and he told us his brother had been involved in an accident in the UAE so, so he right? left okay. and we went and met him there uh. and he said sorry <laughs> <laughs> because he used to live in our house yeah for the time he was our keyboardist so that's when now i realized there's a gap here this is a second keyboardist who has left then i started teaching myself the keyboards luckily my sister elder sister just second born mm. she had learned playing the piano 
when she was at Al- Al- Alliance School, mm. she started teaching me how to play the, the keyboard. Yeah. So now you took it. So I took it over. Nikaanza kununua vitabu nini nafuatia the guys who are the big names in in bands and there was one guy I have to mention this guy mm. he's late Mohammed Tonka mm. this guy is the one who taught me mm. yeah i say it he's he's gone but this guy he blessed me god used him to bless me in a very big way with those whatever i can do on the keyboards mm. Mohammed Tonka i'll never forget this god bless him yeah so because you've mentioned keyboard i have to go back to studio opening up a studio is a huge thing it's not nothing to pass over hey. yeah. first and foremost at that time you're making that much revenue to be able to open up a studio like this music thing is working um I i'm not even talking about the places you're traveling to and the impact that you're having but now that you open up the studio who is becomes a producer i was the producer so that role comes in now yeah like i said earlier you know mm. i i've been drawn throughout to the technical yeah mm. so <clears throat> not mechanical but technical ya yeah, upande wa nini uh, music and uh, i learned and then i was trained and then became the band's studio and live uh performances engineer mm. i've been that to date unless there's a place where we go there's there's you know outsource services then i just talk to the sound man but that's what i've been doing all along in the band i produce arrange not all but nearly all okay yeah okay th- i have okay let's pause a bit on this let's let's have a financial conversation M- money has been known to break up bands Uh, money has been known to be squandered by bands um especially when it begins coming in the city i've just had before you with dna uh, it's talked about wasting a lot of money how did the financial structure within your band work were you all of you on a salary how how did it work when money came in of course i'm not asking about the amounts i'm just trying to figure out how is it that till today the company still exists You're telling me you're still living and eating off this music. Yeah. How how haven't you like please break that down. Okay. <clears throat> We've had a quasi structure when we we had a quasi structure when we started. And like I said Teddy was the overall and admin he was the finance manager. Mm. But as we came of age the younger siblings then Billy took over. In fact we call him our minister of finance. <laughs> you know. He does all that and then we started engaging people to do our books mm. and the little investment we have. And it's been like that ever since. So as a comp- we 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 have been lucky I'll still go back to the iron fist control of our late mother mm. because she wanted to do to know how we spent each and every penny na mujueke akiba eh msifikire mtapiga ngoma kila siku she used to tell you that yeah msifikire mtapiga ngoma kila siku so from Mujue. every month salary from every residency from every payment there was saving happening yeah an investment happening into your we, own gear we have we have something <laughs> 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 you know in Kenya if you're a musician and you're living in your own house your own house Do you live in your own house? Yes, I I do. That is nothing small. I've interviewed many many people here. You know it's not easy to live in your own house. Yeah. From music. From music. Okay. That is That's mm. that's one thing, Cindy. Mm. And of course I won't go into details but yeah, of course, it's, it's God right. has been gracious to us. And our royalties still coming in till today. Some some past not music. like before. Oh, not yeah, like music trends have changed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Actually, but then you know the the beauty of it is that there are so many platforms distributing music which whereby you're doing self licensing. If you know the business mm. and you have if your music that has some element of being popular utala lanja. Okay. Yeah. Did any of the fun, by the by the time 1990 was hitting 
had any of the founding members been like me by then imechoka na hii ilikuwa kitu ya young game sasa hivi nataka kuoa kuna vitu zingine that are more serious that i need to do we've been through that but not in the 90s okay we've been through that um our late brother george mm-hmm. left the band oh he did yeah? yeah for a couple of years and then he came back oh he left and came back yeah that must have hurt of course george was a genius and replacing him was almost impossible when you say he was a genius explain very gifted and very creative you know you can be a good guitarist mm. but you just copy but george whatever he does on any given song will give it life mm. life he had that gift he he would he would play the keyboards play the guitar play the flute play the saxophone what that's that's something you know and proficiently that is something yeah so it was it was a big loss and replacing him was not easy mm. and he's a genius so you can already see i need more stimulation to my mind yeah. than than just I've, i feel like i've maxed out here mm-hmm. when you started the studio were you producing for other people Yes. You said it as a business now. Yeah, it was a business. So the Mushroom Studios which is a business Mushroom of Mushroom Sound Lab was a stu- uh, business. We we got artists coming in from Uganda, Tanzania recording at our studio. We produced some of the big names then. Such Either as... recorded or produced or composed for. Mm. From Uganda Sami Kasule did two of his albums. Oh. at our studio I was on the keys uh Shaka from Uganda mm. from Tanzania many artists used to come within Kenya Esther Wahome the late Chibolonza uh I can name so many <laughs> and they went on to to get you know massive hits mm. recorded at our, at our studio some I produced some I just performed on their songs I remember <laughs> the late Queen Jane. Mm. She came to record at our studio. And when I listened to her music I said, uh, Queen Jane, unaweza kunipatia nafasi tufanyie album yako vingine." And she was open-minded. Mm. She said, "Why not? Nikamwambia, umepiga music river road." ndio music yote river road ndio Kenya ina uzio huko lakini wouldn't you want your music to be appreciated beyond Kenyan borders and she was open minded and i worked on her album which was titled Dorogonya mm. i brought in my brother Billy to play the bass George was on the guitar i played a bit of keys and rearranged some of the music and when she took it to river road they rejected that album mm. they said kwa nini umevunja ile culture umeenda kupigiwa na wao wanapiga music kizungu ama the feel is not right for river road mm. she came back to me and said wewe uli ni advise vipi nikamwambia that is what i wanted because i don't want you to remain a river road artist mm. after one year she came back to me she said this is the biggest selling album I've done because <laughs> non kikuyus were buying it now mm, mm. so we've had such experiences that's a powerful one that's a powerful one at this time of the 90s who are your who are your industry peers who is there mostly from mombasa yeah i would mention mombasa roots uh-huh. yeah safari sounds mm-hmm. Um, the Spartans were still there from Nairobi um, there was a Goan band a uh, Sishola band I've forgotten the name there were about two three other bands Vundumuna was there uh, Sami Kasule when we came in Sami Kasule and uh, Stefano somebody Stefano a Greek guy was were riding high with their fusion of uh, this Euro- European uh, afro music mm, mm. they were riding high and then there was uh, 
Jack Odongo, what's the name? African Heritage. African Heritage. Yeah. Kinagido. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was that was the time man. Susan Matiba uh, uh, Susan Gashukia and what's Joyce no Boya. Joy Boya. Joy Boya, yes. Yeah. Musically speaking. Yeah. So you not only knew her from a place of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but got to know as an employee. Musically speaking, I recorded them and mixed and mastered their album no in way. my sitting room. <laughs> uh, not the album. <laughs> yes. Jam Riambo. Oh, that's that was that was That was the song. biggest hit. I'm the one who recorded that song. <laughs> what are the chances that's of that? how I got to know Joy and uh, Suzanne and Susan Matiba. Yes. Yeah. I have the, uh, the a copy of that uh, single. That is crazy. They recorded it at our studio, but by then we had not moved into Madaraka, mm. where we had taken a whole floor. We were recording from home. So they recorded in our living room in Langata, South Lanzese. Jogo Ajirani Akifai, Koko, you stopped the recording. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> so you see, I. God has used us and me to record, produce so many artists. Some we've written songs for, like Princess Farida, who, mm. who used to be our dancer. Mm. I wrote one song for her, and Teddy wrote one song for her, and we made a compilation and recorded a producer. That was her first album. Today she's a great singer. This, can I ask a very sad question? Please do. Why don't I know any of these people? What I mean by that is, me even who's in the industry, if you name some names, at least I have, I have, I can picture faces. But as an avid, obsessed consumer of music, who should, who should have an understanding of all this music and have it at my fingertips, and it even be the foundation in which I started with music, why was I then looking to Asha Raymond and boys? To, like, why doesn't, why don't, why, why do people come here and sit on this seat and when they're talking about music, they start with Te Josiah? I've, I've, one of the reasons why I wanted you to talk for so long yeah, yeah, yeah. was because 99% of everybody who comes to sit here and they're talking about music, they all start from, yeah, and then when Kenyan music started, Te Josiah, and I'm like, hold on. Uh, I've had it so many times, I'm like, why doesn't anybody ever say the mushrooms, safari sounds? <laughs> <laughs> A very good question. 